Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. I just cannot believe how good Lucy looks right now. Of course, she ate a big meal and she shed out and she looks huge and absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that is one absolutely beautiful snake. And speaking of big snakes, my anaconda once again is uh, in another state that we've never seen here because of course now that we have the big water feature over here and she ate obviously that really huge pig for Easter, take a look at this right now. Obviously what happens when a animal eats a large meal is the next day or two the animal will actually kind of bloat a little bit inside of it creating gases and that gas is actually causing her to float on top of the water like this and that absolutely mammoth lump right there is crazy. The thing that I find very interesting is again this is what happens in the wild and you have to wonder if that's a good thing right? The fact that she's able to float it takes all the pressure off of that animal kind of sitting on her if she was on land. I mean, I'm just amazed because I hadn't even thought about that. When I fed her a big meal, what would happen when they had this kind of big bloat that happens every time you feed her a big meal or any snake a big meal for that matter? It's just crazy. So wild, I just don't even know what to say. And it's like I keep mentioning, every time something new happens with ivy in this enclosure it's like a learning experience i mean what an amazing thing now ultimately you can see she's actually kind of doing these urates in the bottom of her enclosure of course we want to keep that enclosure clean the only way i can really do that is to go inside there and uh, with a little siphon actually siphon all of this off but i want to do that without disturbing her much because obviously she looks very uncomfortable and this bloat here will probably last two or three days before she really does digest it a lot but that is just absolutely incredible so I tell you what guys I think uh, we have to get into some shorts and jump in with Ivy So let's go ahead and go inside and just take a look at Ivy over there. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy looking how big she is. And basically what I wanna do is just get in the water here, try not to actually stir up anything, but just try to suck out all of this kind of waste over here, just to make it a little bit more tidy in here. We could drain the entire thing in like 10 or 15 minutes, but we don't wanna actually affect her. So I'm just gonna come in here and this hose here actually can just suck all of the sediment out here. I can get all this kind of junk out of here the best I possibly can. It's not going to be perfect. What I'll do is show, I'll just kind of wait till she's 100% digested before I come in here and do a real good clean of it. Right now I'm just trying to do as good as I possibly can within reason. I don't want to get her kind of riled up. She's got a big meal in her right now. Obviously I just want to let her go. Again, I'm not going to do a huge, great job of this. I'm just going to do the best I possibly can do. She's coming at me right now. I'm not sure exactly what she wants to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just keep them. Oh, sorry girl. I didn't want to really rile her up much, but unfortunately she just kind of sensed me in here and now she's moving around a little bit. So I'm gonna try to let her just settle for a minute and then I'll get back in because I just don't, again, look at how big that is. I'm just worried about her moving around too much. So I'm gonna just let her settle for a second. I'll come back. All I've got is one little spot over here to still do and then I'll get out and just leave her be. Cause again, I don't want to rile her too much, but uh. Wow, this is in, this is incredible. This is this is super impressive. I mean, it's uh, it's new to me. We didn't get it all out, but we got the majority of it out just to kind of keep it a little more tidy in here and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead, climb out, get my hose out of here. All right, Ivy, we'll let her settle in. Uh, leave her alone for the next few days while that lump is going down. So, have you guys ever seen anything like that before? Absolutely insane. Well, I have my shorts on and uh, obviously my socks off. I might as well go ahead and do a little foot spa. It's been a couple days since I've done it. Ooh, the water's nice and warm. <laughs> Again, been uh, trying to do these every few days because hey, the fish like it. Uh, we still feed them, obviously. They're fish, so we still feed them, but uh, I tell you, that feels so good. Oh, that's so awesome. I know a lot of people are like, that is disgusting, Brian. You either love it or you hate it, right, Bruce? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bruce doesn't, Bruce won't do it. <laughs> he won't do it, but I think Jessica likes it. So, you know, about half of us love it, half of us hate it. 
guys know that the caiman lizards are a really aquatic animal, so we had them in kind of a temporary setup. This is the enclosure that I was thinking would work out really well. Of course, this used to be salt and peppers cages and stuff like that, but of course they need a little bit more land mass than just this, right? But I love this aquatic feature, so I thought that I could maybe take some ledges like this. Like, I think I'm gonna attach this ledge right here. I can actually screw right in the back here to attach it here, and then I can foam all of this in here, and I can just kind of secure it with maybe some sticks or something like that. And once the foam adheres to the glass, we've got another ledge that it can climb up here, climb over here. And then I'm trying to think if I maybe add something else. I don't know if I want to add like maybe another ledge over here. I'm not 100% sure yet. Maybe something that even goes in the water that it can climb out of, have different levels and stuff like that. Obviously we'll add a bunch of, you know, like branches and stuff like that to climb up because they're really, they're a they're an interesting animal. They're arboreal, but they're also aquatic. So you gotta have a big water area, but also they love to climb. Uh, so we wanna have kind of both, you know, a hybrid between land as well as the other things. So I think I just have to work on this enclosure. I'll start getting it done today. Maybe I'll finish it tomorrow and we can actually move them in here, which I think would be pretty cool. Attaching this first thing here, what we wanna do is fill this cavity just with uh, you know, great stuff foam or any expandable foam, right? But obviously that's a lot of cavity to fill up. So this is a little trick you can use. You can actually use paper towel or newspaper or anything to just kind of crumple up in here. And basically you fill the majority of that cavity because what you wanna do is have that foam basically expand out and then adhere to the glass. And when this stuff adheres to the glass and goes, it literally is almost like a rock, like cement and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is just fill up as much of this cavity with just paper right now now that should be perfect so again what I'm gonna do is just kind of get a base where I'm just filling all of this up here this stuff is pretty uh, messy so I always suggest you know if you can't wear gloves it's a good idea and uh, also just be prepared to probably make a little bit of mess on the floor and stuff like that what I'm gonna do is set it where I want to set it which is like right about here I'm gonna prop it up with this the best I can. Hey Bruce, can you give me a hand for one second? Can you just jump on this side right real quick and just hold this right like that for me? Just for a second, just like that. Yep, thank you. And I'm gonna just screw this in here. Hey Bruce, thank you. And then now that back is secure, I can kind of secure the front like this the best I can. Then I'll probably go back and just do a little bit more foam, just kind of fill that up the best I can. Just like put it right in here, kind of foam that whole edge. We should be good. So this one looks like it should be all set. And again, now this gives it a ledge. We'll have some vines and some other climbing areas. So now I can go up on this ledge. It can come way up here where the basking light is gonna be, or it can get onto this side. And I'm trying to think if I'm gonna put another ledge over on this side or not. So I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and foam that in right there. And then that gives it lots of land to get onto, right? It can get up here, it can go here, it can get into the cool spot of the cage. And then if I put a bunch of climbing limbs in here, I think this, this enclosure is looking dope. A little foliage, it's gonna be really good. So I'm just gonna foam this in, leave that where it's at, and I think uh, we're good to go. I'm just realizing that I, I have to drain the water. I was gonna try to do it without it, but the fact is if there's a little crevice back here, I have to foam that crevice in, or the animal could actually swim in there and get behind that rock, which would be a, a nightmare, obviously. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the water, and then I'll adhere that, let this dry for the day, and then tomorrow I can come back and really start to fixture this out and make it look absolutely beautiful and here in the next couple days hopefully we can get them in here and see how they go but uh i love working on new enclosures i mean it's just going to be so dope to see them in here Hopefully by now you guys know that we do a podcast called Checking In Every Wednesday. Might be adding to it because, Laura, you think you're going to start to do your own podcast, I hear, huh? Now that we can Skype people in, you said you might do it. I'm thinking about it. What day would you do it if you did it? Mm, I'm not sure. I think the day probably that made sense would be maybe Monday. So Monday? Interesting. Well, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a podcast. It'd be the same channel, so we'd have maybe Monday 
uh, Lori's podcast, then Wednesday, the Checking In podcast. Of course, uh, Noah and Eric do Friday. And then I've even thought about maybe doing one on my own uh, that would be more animal-centric and not as topical or stuff like that, maybe on like a Saturday or something like that. But let us know in the comments if you want more podcasts. And if you haven't checked our podcast out, I'll have a link in the description. Go do that for me, okay? Uh, yeah, crazy. She's, uh, she's just sitting under the waterfall. I mean, it's a... <laughs> I'm learning so much about this animal. Uh, I'm blown away every single day. It's interesting here at the Reptarium because a lot of animals cycle very similarly when it comes to sheds. So Jeffrey, the hypogranite Burmese python, just shed out and looks absolutely incredible. And I don't know if it's the food cycle that we're on or if there's something like a hormone in the air that they all kind of sync up, but we had a lot of animals shed and holy cow, they look gorgeous. Of course, Moo Moo just shed too and she <laughs> looks so good. She's really starting to get a lot of her spots in now. Definitely a lot more just in the last couple shed so she looks absolutely wonderful and take a look at Al right here this again just makes me wonder about the level of intelligence right the fact that this was the door that actually pushed open and he went on his little walk for about nine hours at the Reptarium but nevertheless Al shed two today and looks absolutely wonderful I mean just look at how incredible that snake is right there unbelievable and again just weird that so many snakes shed the exact same day really wild I mean they all kind of went into blue and went opaque but Al is roaming around definitely looks incredible right now but he's probably ready for food so here I think uh, in the next day or two we'll have some food for all the big snakes including Al and Moo Moo and Perdita and all those guys but absolutely wonderful even El Toro the bull snake shed out and looks absolutely incredible. I think that was it. I think just the four animals shed out, but there's a handful of other ones that are coming up pretty soon, like Cupcake is deep in shed, so she'll be shedding soon too, but El Toro the bull snake is really amazing. I can't wait till we get back open up because the short amount of times we were open, people loved handling this guy. Just a really cool active snake, absolutely wonderful, and uh, again, it's gonna get much bigger and much cooler. So I was gonna ask you, are you getting anywhere with the hip shot? Do you have stuff uploaded on the gift shop no. yet? Do you have you haven't started yet or no? No. You haven't even started. No. When are we gonna do that? I don't know. I'm busy. You're busy? I'm busy. I, did, I thought well Beth isn't doing anything, right? Beth isn't doing anything at all, is she? No, never I'm you know playing. I didn't think so. So why don't you get Beth to do it? Yeah, well, we'll see. Alright, well it's almost the end of it gotta get it going. Please. Pretty please. We'll see. Please? Actually, another animal that shed out today, of course, is my Bolin's python. Unbelievable. It still seems surreal to me that I own a Bolin's python. Of course, we've been keeping it over at BHB just to keep it really simple set up uh, for the next several months, just so that it does really well. Once it gets a little bit older, and of course, it's going to turn jet black and bright yellow, that's when we'll take it over to the Reptarium. But I don't want anything to happen to this absolutely beautiful animal. And Bolin's are, again, kind of the pinnacle python. I'm not going to lie to you. These are like the king cobra of the python world. Elusive animals, not much is known about them in the sense that they're from New Guinea and parts of Indonesia. Almost impossible to breed. There's been several people that have been successful breeding, but for some reason we just haven't been able to crack the code on how to actually breed these guys. Now, Kevin over at Nerd, who I got this Bolins from, this is actually a captive hatch one that came from a wild-caught gravid female, and uh, so he's been trying to breed them this year, and he feels he may actually be able to crack the code and actually produce some Bolins pythons. And again, over in Europe, a few people have been able to produce consecutively small, small clutches but nevertheless this animal is ridiculous i love it to death and again i can't wait till it gets a little bit bigger look at it i mean the head and it's just kind of the way they move it's just so unusual and i am loving the opportunity to just understand this species and hopefully work more with them in the future oh my gosh guys i am so excited about this snake right here of course this is a savu python these guys are much like maclats pythons they're almost like really like a dwarf maclats python so they are a different subspecies but uh this girl just ovulated today. I mean, you can see how thick she looks right now. That is super exciting. It's been about three or four years since I've produced Savu pythons. Again, a cool little Indonesian python. They sometimes are called white eye pythons in Indonesia because they have kind of a silvery white eye, but uh, really cool. They hatch out their red and then they go through that octogenic change and ultimately become almost freckled like this. Just super cool snakes. I tell you what, I 
have been so excited about the fact that it looked like we we're gonna produce and now she finally ovulated so here in the next month and a half or so I should be able to have babies and by the way she's got me this handcuffs this is snake handcuffs right here so uh, I don't know how I'm gonna get her off my hands right now but uh, but nevertheless I couldn't be more excited and I cannot wait to share with you guys how insane these babies you're gonna love them when these things hatch out you're gonna be like no way Brian these things are incredible you have everything foamed in right now I've just got things wedged in this is gonna be a mess uh, Laura usually comes up and touches things up she's gonna be really mad at me about about this one down here I can promise you that but nevertheless we're gonna just let this set up overnight so it becomes really hard and then tomorrow we can start to really scape it. and I, I love doing stuff like this because your creativity is what makes the enclosure what it is right you can do anything you want and I may add some more stuff I have no idea but definitely some vines some climbing branches stuff like that definitely some foliage in here some greenery and stuff like that but uh, all in all I think that the animals are gonna love this new enclosure and again, Ivy is uh, looking wild for sure. The next couple of days, I'm gonna be like, what is she gonna do? I hope that you enjoyed the uh, chronicles of my anaconda because I'm enjoying them. If you haven't gotten sick of me yet, there's actually an entire playlist of me messing with big snakes and stuff like that. You can also listen to my podcast. It's called Checking In. You can subscribe right over here. Please do that for me. Also subscribe to this channel so you know when I upload a video and all that stuff. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.